Ladies and gentlemen, guys and girls, my name is Raven and welcome back to my channel. And welcome to the ultimate Black Prior guide. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys everything you need to know about the Black Prior, from the basic stuff to the advanced stuff to everything in the middle, how he plays, his play style. And he has a couple of play styles, really. He has a defensive one, a bashy one. We're going to go over all of that. We're also going to be going over everything you need to know in terms of his heavy parry punishes, his light parry punishes, out of stamina punishes, max out of stamina punishes, and the whole thing, okay? We're going to go over it all. And one thing just to keep in mind is that I'm playing on PC, but I'm using an Xbox controller. So pretty much just convert whatever I'm saying if I say X, B, all that sort of stuff, convert it to whatever you uh, play on. I'm going to try and say, you know, faint and all this sort of stuff, so it's more generic, but if I do end up saying, oh yeah, press B and then go into this, it's pretty much, you know, just convert it to wherever you are. And with that said, let's get into it, shall we? Now, first of all, let's take a look at his actual moveset, and we'll go over it all uh, one by one for those of you who are just beginning with the game. Now, there's a few things to keep in mind when it comes to the Black Prior. First of all, his superior light attacks, they uh, have superior block on the openers. That's really, really interesting, and I'll go over that later on. Now, he also has undodgeable heavy finishes. Once again, that's a really, really cool mechanic. I'll also go over that in a minute. He has a bunch of chain starters, and his light attacks can basically lead into the bash as well, which will go over all of this. He has an awesome bulwark stance which is really really cool as well as a cancel to that in bulwark stance it allows you to do his awesome flip which is pretty much you know crushes everything in this game and he also can uh, have a heavy unblockable from that which you can faint as well so we'll show you all of that and this right here is a really cool thing he has dodge block so your guard automatically matches the direction you're dodging now just to show you that quickly so if i'm locked onto this guy if i dodge over here Right to the left, it goes over there, dodge to the right. My basically block is going to follow that. So it's a really cool mechanic that you can use. If someone starts attacking you, uh, you can basically just like walk into their attack by dodging into it. And by doing that, you can guarantee that at least you're going to take a bit of chip damage, but you're not going to take the full brunt of the attack. So the first move we're going to be looking at is the Harsh Requiem, okay? So this is basically a chain move. It's light, heavy, heavy, light, so on and so forth. So I'll show you what that looks like. So the first one is a light attack into a heavy. And of course, you can see I go shining blue there. That basically means that if the bot was to dodge at that point in time, then he wouldn't be able to dodge that heavy. He would get hit by it. So all heavy finishers uh, have that undodgeable property. And of course, you can do a heavy into a light. It's the same sort of thing. It's all Harsh Requiem, okay? So you can go light, heavy, heavy, light, whichever one you want. Just keep in mind if you do the heavy to the light it's going to be a fast light attack but of course it's not going to have that undodgeable property now next up is the horizon spin now this is his zone attack okay it looks like this now the zone attack itself does no damage but it does do stamina damage to so keep that in mind but it has a very wide arc so it will hit people on the outskirts of the zone so if they're you know on the fight they're still sort of circling you they want to get a piece of you and then you go and hit that zone attack you're going to smack them and they're going to go flying backwards now of course they're not going to cop any damage it's going to be stamina damage but you can follow up the zone attack with a free light attack and it looks like this bop now that light attack afterwards is guaranteed, so keep that in mind. It has a wide arc, so it's going to hit a lot of people. It's going to knock them back, and whoever you do end up hitting with it, you get a free light attack. As far as zones go, it's pretty good. It's not the best thing in the world, but yeah, he has better things in his toolkit, but it's a nice addition and something to keep an eye out for if you end up using it. Now, the next move we're going to be taking a look at is the Tenebrous Thrust. Okay, now this is his standard dash forward into a heavy attack move. Looks a little like this, dash forward heavy. Now, this thing doesn't have the longest range, so you got to keep that in mind. Now, if I was just to do it here, okay, it's got a limited range, so it's not going to go super far, but it is going to go far enough that if you're sort of close to someone and you do that, it's going to catch him off guard. Now, keep in mind, it is a heavy, so it's not the fastest thing in the world. Get a nice execution off, but it does allow executions as well. Ready? There we go. So yeah, when it comes down to uh, the Vortiga, Black Prior, Urzabet, whichever one you want to call it, it all comes down to distance with this guy. But there are some unique properties when it comes to his Tenebrous Thrust, and that is the fact that it has that uh, superior block crushing counter thing to it. So I'll show you what that looks like. So basically, if you hit that move straight away as he's coming into it, okay? So in the startup of the phase, when you dash forward, he will basically uh, block it and he will do an unblockable property to it, okay? 
when this guy does a top heavy. So all you have to do is wait for him to go in, bang, and just basically time it right, okay? So as the attack's gonna land, you do the start of your startup, you dash forward, you hit that heavy, you're gonna get the unblockable property, and of course, you're going to basically crush them in the face, and there's nothing they can do. It's crushing counter. They're pretty much screwed whenever you hit them with a crushing counter move, because it counters their move, and you hit them for free damage. Just gotta remember, startup phase. It's at the very start of your move, not the start of their move. So that's a nice little trick with the Tenebrous Thrust. Next, we're going to go into Tenebrous Rising. Now, this right here is his bash, and this is a major part of this whole thing. Mind you, I'm just going over the moves right now, and then we're going to get into how you play this guy. But yeah, we'll go over Tenebrous Rising. It's a dash forward into a guard break, which will basically do the bash, and you can follow it up with a free light attack. So dash forward, guard break, and you get a free light attack if you confirm that bash bomb. Now, keep in mind, the bash has a very short range, okay? Very short range. And you can sort of delay it a little bit, which is really, really cool as well. You can go straight away into it, get that free light attack, or you can do it at the last second of the dodge. Boom, like that. So straight away, or delay now. Okay, and keep in mind that you have to hit the light attack directly after you land the bash. Boom, light attack for free. Boom, light attack for free. This thing is pretty fucking, it's pretty damn good. It's the same speed as Conquer is. It's, it's just all around crazy. The pressure is amazing. Next up is Hawk's Charge, okay? So it's a heavy attack, and then you hit your guard break, and you'll go into a bash instead. So all you have to do, guys, is you hit that heavy attack, and then you go for the guard break during the startup, and you'll basically go into a bash. So it goes pretty goddamn fast. So you can catch people off with this, and I'll show you that later on. So you can basically dash back, you can go for the heavy, and then basically go into it. You can keep your distance, sort of walk away from someone. The bots follow you, but people usually won't. They'll sort of, like, test you out. And then you can just, from a distance, go for that heavy guard break, and then go into the bash, and you can pretty much just crush them from a distance. It does catch people off guard a lot of the time. Now, keep in mind as well, it's only during the starter. So if I go for a heavy attack, another heavy attack, and try and do it, it's not going to work. It's only when you do your very first heavy attack at the start of the move, and you can basically cancel it from there. You can't do it mid-combo. Next up is his sprint attack. So all you do is, when you're in free guard mode, you're running around, you just hit heavy attack, and you'll do this big sweeping strike. This thing is fairly useless, it's good at clearing minions, it's good for if you just want to run into a team fight like a spastic and just go hey and just hit someone, it can work there. It's also good for maybe uh, chasing down people, although if they're watching they'll just dodge it. But overall, it is what it is, it's a running, uh, out of guard, heavy attack. It has its uses in small places, but it's not this massive thing you want to be using all the time. And now we get into his big thing, and that is his Bulwark Stance, and his Bulwark Slash, and his Bulwark Counter. Now, before I do that, I just want to show you guys the fact that he does have crushing counters on his light attacks as well. Now, this move has uh, basically the same timing as a parry. So when you see the guy attack, it's going to glow a white uh, color at the very end, his guard. So watch it glows white okay so that's how you parry normally i got a video on that on the channel if you guys don't know how to parry but pretty much that's how you do it so you wait for that thing to glow like normal and then you hit a light attack okay and you're going to do a crushing counter superior block type deal boom now that means you take no damage and you get to basically fuck them up with free damage and you can do this thing in any direction all you need to do is just get the timing down he goes to attack boom you see it glow hit your light attack at the same time and they're going to cop it this is a really integral part of his toolkit, and it's also really, really fun to do. Boom. But now we're getting to the big thing, and that is his Bulwark Stance, his Bulwark Slash, and his Bulwark Counter. Now, let's go into Bulwark Stance. So the, basically, the way you enter this thing is you just pull back on the uh, right movement stick. Okay, the right stick. And you basically enter Bulwark Stance. Now, from here, he's unique. He can walk around. Okay, now this thing has zero counters except one, and that is guard break. If someone was to guard break you when you're in bulwark stance like this, you can't do anything about it. You can't counter guard break. You just get guard broken, and then, of course, they get a free heavy attack off of that, depending on the character. So you do need, do need to watch yourself when you go into your uh, full bulwark stance, okay? Because if you go into this, he can just guard break me, and I'm screwed. I'll show you that. In fact, I'll get him to do a guard break. So I'll go in my bulwark stance. He's going to guard break me. I can't do anything to stop that. I can't counter guard break. Nothing. Ready? I'll try. Counter guard break. No dice, okay? So the thing about that is you got to watch out for that because that's the counter for that move. Full bulwark stance. Boom. I can't do anything. So you got to watch out for that. But what he does have, okay, if you go into full bulwark stance and you hit a light attack at the right time, once again, parry timings, you get to flip someone and you get free damage. 
This is insane, okay? This thing is one of the most overpowered moves in the entire game when you actually manage to land it because it can not only flip the guy who uh, is attacking you, it flips every single person who's attacking you at the same time, okay? So if multiple people are attacking you, I flip this guy, three people get flipped, and if they're in range of the uh, attack, they're going to get hit as well. But yeah, so the thing about the move is it will flip multiple people, it will damage whoever's in range of the attack, and it's 100% guaranteed once you hit that flip. The damage is coming down unless you're standing next to a wall. You uh, will swing out and of course you'll still hit the wall and it will cancel it. That's a little shit. But for the most part, it's fine. Now keep in mind this thing has a long uh, recovery time as well. So if you go for it and you fuck it up, see how long it takes him to get recovered. That's a long time. People are going to mess you up in the time it takes that thing to go back to normal. I'll fuck it up. Ready? Messed it up, and I'm basically going to cop damage. So you got to make sure you time it properly. You got to wait for it. Boom. Now, you also don't want to just sit here in this stance because, like I said, they can guard break you out, and you're screwed. So what you want to do is you want to wait. When you see him attack, you want to go into it. Boom. Like that. Okay? Now, there's also multiple ways to go into this stance. You can go straight into it after blocking. Ready? He's going to block. Boom, and hold down the stick, and you go into the stance straight away. Now, this is good if people do multiple attacks, okay? Because what you can do is, you can block the first attack, like so, go into it there, and then you're already into it. So then as soon as you go into it, if you see another attack coming, you can then flip them and basically hit them for free damage. Now, the other way to get into the uh, full bulwark stance is to hit them with an attack, and then go into it straight from there. So when you're doing the recovery from an attack, you can go into it. But he also has the ability to hit a heavy attack, which is a wide sweeping, unblockable heavy. Boom. Just like that. It does a bunch of damage, and then if you hold it down, you go straight back into the stance. If you don't hold it down, you basically stay out of the stance and you're good to go. Okay? Now keep in mind, this thing right here can be fainted. That's really, really important because that sets up a bunch of combos we can do later on. And it's also good at uh, trapping people, essentially. So what you can do is you can lure people in uh, with the fact that you're like this. You go into the bulwark stance, and then they, they're coming at you, and basically then you can go for that heavy. If they're already going for a guard break, they're going to cop the damage. And if they're not going for a guard break, what you can do is you can go heavy, faint, and then guard break them, and then you can basically go into a bunch of combos from that point onwards. There's tons of things you can do. So that right there is his entire move kit. Now we're going to go over his uh, punishers, his parry punishers, his out stamina punishers, the whole lot. Now when it comes to his uh, parry punishers, when it comes to the heavy one, there's two things you can get off of the heavy punish the first one is a guaranteed bash into a light attack so basically what you can do is you can go for the bash so parry bash into a light attack that's the first one you can get or you can go for the longer one which is a light attack into the bash into the light attack now keep in mind the bash isn't guaranteed after that but the light attacks and bashes are so quick for the most part uh, most people are going to get hit by it so the guaranteed one is you go for the parry dash forward bash into a light that's guaranteed or you can go for the uh, parry into the light and then go for the bash light. Okay, now the bash light after the first light aren't guaranteed, but the first light is. But most people will get hit by it. So it's still worth doing. Uh, you can get more damage out of it. Boom, boom, boom. Or if you want to go safe, just dash forward, light, bam. Now the difference here is with the light parry punish is you get a free top heavy. So all you have to do is basically parry that light attack. And you get a free top heavy for a fuckload of damage. 35 damage. That's crazy amount of damage. So all you have to do is parry that light attack. And then go for that top heavy. Bam. That's a fuck ton of damage right there. And yeah, if you manage to parry light successfully all the time, they're going to be in a world of hurt. All right, guys, so now we're going to be talking about his out-of-stamina punishers. Okay, so when they just naturally get them out of stamina, his max punish is a side light when you throw them on the ground, side light followed by a top heavy. That's the most you can get out of it. Now, you want to be very, very careful here because you don't want to throw out a top light followed by a side heavy because the top light will always miss. I'll show that to you guys right now. So basically get him out of stamina. So I'll guard break him and throw him even close. Boom. I'll go for the top light. It's going to miss. Always, no matter how close you are to them, it's always going to miss. So keep that in mind. So you want to make sure that the light attack you're throwing is a side light followed by a top heavy. So once again, we'll get him out of stamina. So guard break, throw him on the ground. Gonna go for side light, top heavy. Boom. So that right there, guys, is the out of stamina punish. Now we're gonna go over to the out of uh, 
stamina punish when you parry them and you knock them on the ground. Now, this one is insanely good, okay? So basically what you get out of it is a side heavy followed by a top heavy for a fuckload of damage. I'll show this one to you guys. Ready? Heavy and top heavy. Boom. That right there does 70 damage. That is a lot of damage. All right, guys, that's a 70 damage is a fuckload of damage. So you want to parry that. You want to basically make sure he's out of stamina. And when he goes for it again, remember, side heavy, boom, top heavy. Just like that. Done and done. They're pretty much screwed. Two out of stamina parry punishes, and they're pretty much dead, okay? And that's pretty freaking insane. Now, one thing as well, keep in mind that with zone attacks, you can crush and counter them as well. That move is so freaking OP. But yeah, out of stamina parry punish is insane. Just remember, though, it's a side heavy followed by a top heavy. If you want the most damage, you got to do that. Now, there's some really interesting stuff you need to know when it comes to his Bulwark counter as well. And that is the fact that you can do it on everything, essentially. So if I was to do the light attack right now, boom, you can flip at the shoulder bash. That is insanely good. No matter how long he holds it for, no matter how many um, unblockable properties he gets, I can flip it. That works for Shigoki's Demon Embrace. That works for pretty much everything in the game. You just got to make sure that you time it right. Boom. It also works for when people drop attack you. It works in every regard. Now, keep in mind, if you do it too soon, you're going to cop it. If you do it too late, you're also going to cop it. Boom. It's all about timing when you come to this move. You just got to wait for it. Boom. Right time, and they're done. Now, keep in mind, it's a very hard to predict thing. You just got to time it like that because if you don't time it properly, then, of course, you're going to do it too soon and you're going to do it too late or they're going to guard break you because you can't just sit there like this. If you could just sit here like this, it'd be over the moon overpowered. But you got to make sure, boom, you just do it at the right time and get used to his timing. Done and done. It's such a good move. Now, another really overpowered thing about his crushing counter is the fact that if you time it right, you can go straight into a bash into a free light attack. It's really, really strong. So all you need to do is basically do the parry timing punish. So light attack, when he goes to attack, it glows. And then you need to wait because if you do it too soon, if you go straight for the guard break bash, okay, it's not going to work. I did it really quick then. It doesn't work. You need to wait till it lands. Okay, so wait for it. Now. Light bash light and it's a really really cool combo remember it works on zones it works on a bunch of things next thing to keep in mind as well is if you go for the guard break uh his guard break punishes what you can do go for that heavy it's too slow okay it works on bots because they're shit but it's not going to work on players you need to basically get a side heavy from guard break side heavy is guaranteed top heavy is not guaranteed now next up let's talk about what you get from our uh, wall splats so what you do is you throw someone against the wall as you can see he's staggered he's stunned he's uh you know all, all over the place he can't do anything in that recovery period now what you can get off of this is a free heavy so you throw someone to a wall you get a guaranteed free heavy, where that side heavy or top heavy, it pretty much works. Now, top heavy is a bit iffy sometimes for most people. I've never had an issue with it. If you do it quick enough, boom, basically throw the heavy out straight away. I seem to get it every single time. Some people are saying, oh, sometimes they don't. Maybe they put the input in a little too late. It all depends. But for me personally, as far as I know, you can pretty much get it off anything if you do it right. But if you just want to be safe, just do the side heavy. It's still guaranteed damage and it does a lot of damage to begin with. That's the wall splat punish. And another thing to keep in mind when it comes to the uh, wall splat is do not change guard stance. Okay, so if I go get him over here, if I go to wall splat him, Okay, boom, and I change to the, say, left, and then I go for the heavy. It's too slow. You saw his guard came back then, okay? So I'll start over here. I'll throw him into the thing. I'll change to the right. Boom. He's going to block that. You want to make sure whenever you throw the person into the wall that you use the heavy attack from the exact same direction that you're facing when you throw him. So my guard is facing the right. I throw him into the wall. I'm going to throw the heavy attack from the right to get that guaranteed damage. If I go switching it around, as you can see, switch to the right. It's not going to work because there's a little delay there in the switching. By the time you switch over, of course, you know, he's recovered by that point and he's able to block. Now let's go over some combos and how he actually plays. So the first nice little combo you can do is you can go uh, basically into Bulwark Stance. You can throw out that heavy, okay? And then you can basically feint that into a guard break. So Bulwark Heavy, Feint, Guard Break, okay? That's really, really good because once again, you get that free heavy attack off of that. So Bulwark, Feint, Heavy, Guard Break. 
go for that heavy attack. It's a nice way to do it. And of course, it throws people off their guard. And if they come in, basically, to go for that uh, guard break to stop the heavy or whatever they want to do to stop you from going to Bulwark Stance, you might catch them off guard and you might hit them. Not guaranteed 100% of the time, but it's a good little mind game. It's also a good trick that if you go into this stance and you want to get out of it, that's a good way to get out of it. Worst case scenario, they uh, counter guard break it, but either way, it doesn't matter. Next one is you go to Bulwark, you heavy faint, and then you go for a light attack instead. So Bulwark, heavy faint, and then you go for that light attack, bash light. That's another really, really cool combo as well. Yeah, there's a bit of delay there. Once again, none of this is guaranteed. It's just nice little mind games you can throw into your normal play style that will throw people off. If you use these all the time, people are going to work it out. If you don't use all the time, it's going to be fine. And now we get into how he actually plays, okay? He's very bashy, okay? Because once again, this is his easiest move when it comes to his bashes. He also has fast light attacks. So lots of people will basically be using the bash, they'll be using the light attacks, and they'll be using the crushing counters. Now, people have learned pretty quickly that you can do the whole uh, flip people thing. That is a thing you can do, but you got to set it up. Okay, and if you time it wrong, you know, bad things are going to happen. But if you time it right, good things are going to happen. But for the most part, he's used as a very bashy character. Now, his out stamina punish is insane right now because there is a bug to it. Essentially, when you bash people when they're out of stamina, they don't regen their stamina at all, and you can keep them out of stamina indefinitely. That's a bug. The devs are going to be fixing that, so I'm not really going to be going, going over that because right now, it's not that big of a thing. It's a big deal, but, you know, it's going to be patched out, so it's not that big of a deal. But his play style overall, it's, uh, you can play two ways. You can be very bashy, very aggressive with your, like, you know, your light attacks, your bashes, go for that heavy and to that bash as well just like start bashing people around drain their stamina fuck them up use the light attacks and abuse all that you can also play him very defensively so you can basically uh play him with crushing counters and of course using the flip as much as you possibly can it really all comes down to your type of play style if you're more of a defensive person then yeah you're going to do fine being defensive if you're more of an aggressive person you're going to do fine being aggressive just be aggressive he has so much to his toolkit that you can basically just do whatever you feel it's, it's actually really, really cool. But for me, I like to play a lot more bashy. I also like to uh, push in the, you know, crushing counters because they're really, really strong, especially once you get the timing down on them. It's just fun to bash people around. And of course, whenever they throw out any attacks, just crush and counter them. The flip is also really, really cool, but it requires a lot of timing. Now, he is a very distance heavy hero. If you're far away, you know for a fact that you can catch people off with that because you know it travels very, very far. If you don't know your distances, then you're pretty much screwed. If you're all the way back here and you go for the dash forward bash, you're not going to do anything. You're going to whiff it. Okay, so you need to know your distances. If you want to go for the dash forward thrush, once again, it's not that close. So you got to make sure that your distances are known to you at least. Least. If you want to go forward for that, you got to be close. You got to be close. If you want to go forward for that bash, you got to be close. But if you want to go for that heavy bash, you can be far away because it tracks in. You can see he goes flying in. Like I said, when it comes to the Black Prior, uh, he is pretty much solid as all how. You have a lot of defensive options. You have a lot of defensive options. You can be uh, aggressive if you want to. You can pull it back and be super defensive if you want to. He just has everything you need. He has crushing counters, superior lights. He's got basically the flip of doom if you get the timing down on that. But that's the thing about the Vortigo. He's a very timing-based hero. You got to be very good at timing your bashes. You got to be very good at timing your flip. You got to be very good at fainting stuff and you know doing mind games. You got to be very very good at applying pressure in a smart way. If you just go you know sitting in bulwark stance, you're gonna get screwed. If you're gonna go just try to be overly bashy, yeah, it will work for the most part. But other times you're also gonna get screwed. You got to use all of his moves and you know all of his kit to the best. Of your ability. But now you should know all of his out of stamina punishers, his wall splat punishers, parry punishers, his max combos. You should know some moves for him, how everything works, you know, what works, what doesn't work, what stuff to look out for. Hopefully, all of this helped you guys out. Now go forth, have some fun, and bring some darkness. But that is the end of the video, guys. So thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and let me know your thoughts. I love reading and replying to all your comments down below. And feel free to check out my Discord and Twitter. There is a link down below in the description box for both of those as well. The Discord is a great way for me to talk to you guys outside the YouTube comment section. And of course, the Twitter is a great way for you guys to get a notification whenever a video is being uploaded because YouTube is a bit weird sometimes. And if you like this video and you like what I'm doing here on the channel and you want to support the channel further, feel free to check out my Patreon. There'll be a link down below in the description box and a link will pop up at the end of the video. And if you choose to donate, it is greatly appreciated. And a big shout out to my current Patreon whose names you've been seeing in the background. Just wanted to say thank you for your support. It really does mean a lot. And please share this video around. It does help me out a fuck ton. And if you want to see more videos from me, please hit the subscribe button. I shall see you all in the next video. Have a good one, guys.